Hello. Today we learn about angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors like enalapril, captopril, lisinopril, ramipril, berintopril, and so on. Or basically all drugs which end with pril. And if you've ever worked in a healthcare environment, you'll see these drugs used so widely for hypertension, um, nephropathy in diabetes type 1, prevention of myocardial events, and so on. So before learning about angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, it's really important that you understand the renin angiotensin aldosterone system known as RAS very well. Because if you know the way this um, physiological system works, then it's so easy to understand how ACE inhibitors work. So when the blood pressure drops or the concentration of sodium in the distal um, convoluted tubules in the kidney, um, there's a specialized apparatus known as, if we zoom into the structure known as the medullary apparatus, which um, this is structure near adjacent to the renal corpuscle and the granular uh, um, system, you see the efferent arterioles coming in and going to the glomerular uh, mineral capillaries uh, inside the renal corpuscle. So these specialized cells are located between the afferent arterioles and the, uh, and the afferent arterioles, which is basically the arterioles going into the renal corpuscle and the arterioles coming out of the renal corpuscle. And the juxtromedal cells are also um, some cells which are located within the distal convoluted uh, tubules. So, in a nutshell, these apparatus and spe or specialized epithelial cells sense that the blood pressure is low and the concentration of sodium is low, so they release the hormone renin. So, when renin is released into the blood, it activates this peptide, it's inactive peptide that's secreted by the liver, known as angiotensinogen. So, renin cleaves some peptides from angiotensinogen 1, and it becomes angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1, it doesn't do much. So, the enzyme angiotensin-converting enzyme, which is located in the capillaries of the lungs and some cells in the kidney and endothelial cells, um, convert angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 is a very potent vasoconstrictor and has wide uh, range of physiological activity, which includes the activation of the sympathetic uh, system, the increased um, retention of sodium and chloride and the excretion of potassium, the activation of the adrenal cortex to release aldosterone, which also um, results in the retention of sodium and chloride and water and the loss of potassium, the vasoconstriction of arterioles resulting in increase of blood pressure, the activation of the pituitary gland resulting in the release of antidiuretic hormone which increases the absorption of water from the collecting ducts. So what happens is after the activation of angiotensin 2 is water and salt retention and increase of, uh, blood, of the vo fluid volume in the blood and increase in blood pressure. So the net effect of angiotensin converting enzyme is to increase the vascular resistance, increase sympathetic stimuli, the loss of potassium and the retention of sodium and chloride, increase of aldosterone and, and antidiuretic hormone. So if you combine all these effects, what you get is increased blood pressure or hypertension. Hypertension is basically increased blood pressure. No one really knows what causes hypertension for sure. So, um, so it's very, very, very appropriate target if you block the activity of angiotensin converting enzyme. So you'll be blocking the vascular resistance, dilating um, 
the arterioles, you decrease the sympathetic activity which results from the uh, activated angiotensin 2, you retain um, potassium and loss uh, sodium and chloride. So the net, the net effect is um, reduced vascular resistance, reduced sympathetic activity, and basically a reduction of blood um, pressure. So it's no wonder that ACE inhibitors are then used for hypertension to reduce the blood pressure, the prevention of myocardial events like myocardial infarction and a stroke for people who already had um, some cardiac events. Because remember, if you reduce the resistance of um, arterioles or arteries or veins, what you do is you reduce the vascular tone, which results in more easier and smooth flow of blood. It's also used for heart failure. So remember, heart failure usually results in um, the inability of the heart to pump uh, blood, uh, blood effectively. So if you reduce the, the RAS system, you excrete more sodium and more uh, chloride, resulting in reduction of blood volume. So it's, it's effective for using in heart failure to reduce the blood pressure and the edema, um, the hypertension, and as we said, prevention of uh, myocardial events. So one of the cautions for um, ACE inhibitors include um, angioedema or anaphylactic reaction, which basically is swelling of the airway, uh, the face. Or, so it's really, really, really um, important that if someone had um, anaphylaxis or angioedema or hereditary angioedema, that they should not use ACE inhibitors because it's very dangerous and could result in... Um, death. Um, there's also a uh, risk of renal disease. ACE inhibitors paradoxically are used for renal disease as well as treating um, some renal um, disorders. So there's a balance of risk and benefits. If you remember the ACE inhibitors reduce the vascular toll of the efferent arteriole. So the kidney doesn't the glomerular doesn't get enough uh, blood so that could result in damage of the kidney as well as um, some benefit for some uh, diabetic nephropathies which which benefit from reduction in the blood pressure in the afferent arteriole so it's really complex um, so it's better left to consultants and people who have very um, wide range of experience in treating those um, diseases. Um, it's also um, really important that ACE inhibitors, especially uh, pro-drugs of ACE inhibitors, are not used in liver failure because most ACE inhibitors are pro-drugs. They need the activation um, in the liver. Exceptions include the captopril and lisinopril, which could be abbreviated as Cali or California, if you wish. So um, the rest, or most of them, need hepatic activation. So it's better avoided in uh, patients with liver failure. Exceptions are captopril and lisinopril. Um, and if you look at interactions of ACE inhibitors, there's a lot, so many of them: triamtrine, metformin, NSAIDs, diuretics, over. 30 40 interactions so it's really difficult to remember all these drugs say if you were in an exam situation or if you didn't have access to the bnf or any um, textbook so the easier method to remember interactions is three interactions if you remember ACE inhibitors increase the concentration of potassium in the blood. There's also risk of angioedema and anaphylaxis. And there's a risk of hypotension or hypoglycemia uh, caused by ACE inhibitors. You could think logically with drugs that are dangerous to use with ACE inhibitors. So if we look now, we could divide all these drugs into three groups or four groups. So if you see all drugs that cause hyperkalemia, like um, potassium sparing diuretics, like spironolactone or triamtriline or amylaride or potassium salts or heparin or angiotensin receptor um, blockers, 
like candesartan or cyclosporine, you better avoid using with ACE inhibitors because they cause hyperkalemia, increase of potassium concentration, and risk of death. And the second group is hypotension and hypoglycemia. It's no wonder that beta uh, ACE inhibitors cause uh, reduction in blood pressure. So if you give with other drugs that reduce blood pressure, like beta blockers, alcohol, calcium channel blockers, um, diuretics or alpha blockers, or any other drug that reduces blood pressure, so you could cause severe hypotension. Also, for some anti-diabetic drugs like metformin, sulfonylureas, also insulin, they all cause hypoglycemia, and ACE inhibitors could um, exacerbate the hypoglycemic effect of these drugs. So you need to be very careful when you use or um, use with caution. The other um, interaction is angioedema and anaphylaxis. So all um, drugs or molecules that cause anaphylactic reactions to angioedema are better avoided. So you see many people who are um, allergic and get you know angioedema with wasp venom extract, bee venom extract, gold, and so on. So if you see um, a drug that causes anaphylactic or angioedema or has cautions, you better avoid using with ACE inhibitors. The other interactions are uh, drugs that cause renal diseases like lithium and NSAIDs. So if you remember lithium, um, ACE inhibitors could uh, block the excretion of lithium resulting in increase of lithium concentration. And lithium is one of a very toxic drug, so it's better avoided using with uh, using with ACE inhibitors, as well as NSAIDs. NSAIDs cause uh, antagonize the hypotensive effect of ACE inhibitors. They also cause renal uh, disease, so they are better avoided. So now it's easier to remember interactions. If you remember hyperkalemia, angioedema, and anaphylaxis, hypotension, hypoglycemia, and renal. Um, drugs that cause um, nephropathy, then you just remember these four steps and then you know all the interactions with ACE inhibitors. Some people like to use this acronym CAPTOPRIL, basically it uses the first letter of these uh, side effects like cough. If you remember, um, ACE inhibitors block the breakdown of bradykinins and bradykinins um, increases, so resulting in cough, especially in um, Afro-Caribbean um, patients. So it's severe cough which cannot be treated with any cough suppressant unless the ACE inhibitor is withdrawn. So it's one of the side effects of ACE inhibitors. So if you remember the CAPTOPRIL acronym is for cough, angioedema, it's risk of angioedema, increase of potassium hyperkalemia, taste change, they cause severe um, orthostatic hypotension, which is basically severe hypotension when somebody stands up. So it's usually used at night. And the first dose hypotension is very dangerous in elderly patients because, uh, of, uh, because of the risk of falls. Um, it's also contraindicated in pregnancy because of um, interference with fetal blood pressure. It's also... Um, Contraindicated with renal artery stenosis with uh, a narrowing of the renal arteries, um, increase of bradykinin as we talked about, and avoidance of pro-drug uh, ACE inhibitors which need liver activation, liver toxicity. They also cause agranulocytosis or leukopenia or reduction in um, white blood cells. So. If you see infection or like sore throat, it's no wonder that ACE inhibitors reduce uh, the, the concentration of white blood cells causing uh, susceptibility to infections.